Hello, Edensonians. I think some of you are doubting who you really are. Apologies, I need to hold the mic. 2021 matriculants, good morning. You are but the guest of honor today. I want you to lift your right hand. But you see, listening is a skill. I did not say lift your right hand and start talking. I said I'd like you to lift your right hand. And I want to take I want you to take this right hand and pat yourself on the shoulder. And then you may say to yourself, well done. Thank you so much. Right, let's get straight into it. See, here's to be seen is my name. I was a student, a learner at this very school, Sir John Adamson High School. Hmm. Um, well, let me just give you a brief history. So I began my journey. My high school journey at Sir John Adamson High School in 1998. Yeah, some of you were not born by then. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, when I speak, I'd like you to look at me, pay attention to me, because I believe I did bath and I'm beautiful. Yes. So you need to look straight at me, and you need to pay attention because in life, I believe you can't give what you don't have. Meaning, your school would not have invited me to come here and give off some wisdom to you if they never saw me fit. Thank you so much. So I began my high school journey in 1998 and I matriculated in 2002. <sighs> Sir John, as I walked in, I was just filled with so much emotions. I saw my... My geography educator. Yo, there he is right there. <laughs> right. And, all right, so some of you can do the math and kind of guess how old he is, because I'm 36 years old, so yeah. So I walked in. Can we look at me, please? So I walked in and I saw some of my educators. But first, when Miss Mrs. Westhaven called me, I, 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 oh, oh, I'm like, oh man, oh man, oh man. Surely my voice is valid. For my high school to actually recognize me and want me to come here, it means there's something positive I'm doing out there. So I had to clap for myself. But let me tell you about my journey at the John Adamson High School. I was a very active student. Oh yes, I was always eager to learn and do more. My love for the arts was birthed on the stage in the school. Um, I remember I, I, I joined, I was in the public speaking team. I did dramatic arts. Um, I did netball. I did athletics, then I was like, nah, <laughs> running is not for me. And then I was also in the swimming team. But for me, it was mostly about speaking. Sir so John Adamson, I was taught by one of the best English educators at that time. Um, they no longer at the school, Mr. and Mrs. Westhaven. Yes, they were married, and they were both English language specialists. And I remember Mr. Westhaven was the HOD for English. And these are the teachers that taught you to walk into the classroom and be confident. Um, they taught us how to have the command for the English language. You know, people look at me and they wonder, wow, Sisi, you speak so well. I say, listen, the school I come from taught me how to speak the way I do. But now, that is just to give attribute to Sir John Adamson. Um, Public speaking, I won many awards in the school through the Ice Statements. I don't know if you guys still do Ice Statements. We did, we did do, right? Through Ice Statements, I did public speaking. We did dramatic arts. And for the first time ever, I was introduced to improv speaking. 
I didn't know what that was. But because we had such great teachers, they taught us to say, listen, you are not going to have a chance to prepare for this speech. You're just going to be given a topic on the spot and you must be able to speak about it right there and then. Mm. And more than anything, um, I was part of the school drama. Now you see dramas, drama teams, you see the stage over here. As I'm sitting there, I'm whispering to Mr. Mayor and I'm saying, ha, ah, so many memories here. We had school plays, we had a play called, we had a musical. I think the biggest musical then, which we had, I need to know that our principal at that time was a woman, Miss De Beer. Mm. Our school was very strict at that time. We all feared Mr. Beer. We made sure that we behaved in a proper way at all times. Um, Duke, uh, Duke Box Door. We had a musical called Duke Box Door. And I was one of the lead singers in the play. And one of the songs we used to sing was used to say, Bye bye, love. Bye bye, happiness. Hello, loneliness. I think I'm gonna cry. Bye, my love, goodbye. So, what did Sir John do for me? I actually believed I could sing. And I started singing on this very stage. We performed the suit. The, the play, the suit. I remember when we played, the, the, do you guys know the play, the suit? Right, so the suit is about a story of a man that walks in and finds his wife cheating on him with the man. And so when the man, but listen guys, listen so you can understand. So when the husband walks in on the wife with another man, the man is found on top of the wife. And the, husband, and the man that is found quickly jumps out of the window. But guess what? He jumps out naked and he leaves behind his suit. And so, the husband decides to say, Matilda, Matilda is the woman's name, and I played the role of Matilda. And, <laughs> yes, I was Matilda. And the husband then decides to say, I forgive you, but we can't turn a blind eye to the fact that we have a visitor in the house. And who is the visitor? The suit. So everywhere Matilda went, she had to go with the suit. When it's dinner time, he would turn around and say, and at that time my husband was Howard Musese. Most of you know him as Hauser. Very famous guy who sings in the music industry. And he would say, Tilly, Tilly, my darling, you forgot your guest. So I would be embarrassed enough to turn around and pick up the suit, whether it's church, whether it's dinner, the suit had to be there. So I got to play Matilda on the stage. Now, I had to learn the art of manifesting different emotions on stage. Because surely Matilda was once upon a time happy, but then it changed and she became so sad and depressed. We walked away from the suit, we did a play again that spoke of apartheid. And in that play, I was I took the role of Mama Winnie Mandela. Yeah. And we had to dramatize the whole play on Robin Island on this stage. And I'm just giving you a snippet so you can just picture how beautiful my high school career was. And um, on this stage, we sang songs, we cried together. I remember on weekends, sometimes drama practice would happen would have to come to school to rehearse for drama. Singing. I was blessed with the ability to sing and it was highlighted at Sir John Adamson High School because I had one of the best singing teachers. She's no longer in the school. Her name was Miss Trish Hunter, Mrs. Hunter. And I remember so well, the choir class was right down here before the tuck shop. So we'd go down there. I was part of the musical, I was part of the school choir, yes. I was part of a group which was called After Dark, which was a special group that sang at events. When there was a matric benediction, we had to come, the After Dark, and we had to sing, we'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again. 
Come sunny day. I remember it was my matric valediction, but I had to sing. So we learned how to sing. And in the matric, in the after dark group, we had um, we Jumelo Masamula was part of the gangs of instrumental. She was with us in the after dark. Hausa was with us. Loiso Mangena, the son of Mike Mangena, was part of the after dark. So basically, I'm trying to show you that through Sir John Adamson High School, giants were birthed. People that are, were able to stand out there and speak their truth without fear or favor. So, matriculants, I stand here before you today and say, I was once like you. Yeah. You know, the other time I went to Zimbabwe and we were gone to a funeral. And when you drove into the cemetery, there was a sign, a big sign written, welcome. Right? We went into the cemetery, got on with our business. But when we drove out, there was another big sign on the wall that said, we were once like you. Right? Now, you need to listen to what I'm going to say. Now, what, what I got from that was, I just said to you guys, I was once like you. We all have choices in life. You will not relive or be a matriculant and an Amazonian of 2021 ever again in your life. The friends that you sit with today may not necessarily be the friends you keep until 2022. The reality is, Right, the gentleman in a black top and a mask with dreadlocks, can you please respect me as I speak? Right. So, the one you're sitting next to today, the one that you call a best friend or a bosom friend today, five years from now, they might be dead. Five years from now, if they're not dead, they might be greater than you. Meaning, five years from now, you might be going to them seeking for employment. Five years from now, the very ones that you undermined may be the ones that you need to put bread on the table. Now, why am I saying this? I'm encouraging you to choose right. Make the right choices. You are sitting here, the reality is most matriculants, not just Sir John Adamson High School, most matriculants, some of them never made it this far to attend a benediction. Some of you, some of matriculants in the country never made it or will not make it to even pass matric. Choose right. Because the choices you make now will determine your tomorrow. Some of you might be sitting here thinking, ha ha, he he, it's all a joke, what what. Listen here, daddy. <laughs> yes, daddy's child, listen here. You are no longer that little boy or that little girl that walked through these gates. You need to choose right. Some of you might decide to not go to tertiary in 2022, which is okay. Some of you might decide to take a gap year, which is okay. Some of you might decide they want to go in full force, go into tertiary, do what they need to do, which is okay. But in all you do, whatever choice, decisions you make, will it make you sleep well at night? There is nothing as painful as choosing something which will um, torture you at night when others are sleeping. Choose right. You are going to go out of Sir John Adamson right now. You are the class of 2021, yes. But what then? What now? Those who choose to take a gap here and stay home and figure yourself out, you will realize that there's nothing fun and old diddle dee about taking a gap here. 
You'll be bored, you'll be home, pray to God, you choose right, you don't fall into traps of starting to take now for drugs and everything else that is unspeakable. Some of you might leave Sir John today, next year you're pregnant and you're mothers. No, these are realities that we need to face. That is why I am here to say you need to choose right. Girls, you need to start empowering yourself. I'm speaking to all the young girls in this hall. It is not fashionable to have a boyfriend and embark in sexual activities and then you find yourself pregnant. No. I am not encouraging sexual activities. I am not encouraging you guys to be rabbits. But because, but because the reality faces us, that statistics show us that during our lockdown, during the scourge, the pandemic of COVID-19, there was a large high number of young girls who were impregnated, young girls who became or are mothers today. I'm going to tell you something that your parents and your teachers might be afraid to tell you. Girls, make it fashionable to carry condoms. No, that's the truth. And if you're laughing, that means you need more education on the subject. Because it's not laughable at all. The reality before us is that girls are having sex. If our stats are telling us that girls from the young age of 10 have been having sex or were raped or are now mothers due to the pandemic. I can only but imagine what is going on in here. So, young girls, I need you to be selfish about yourself. Gese Zulu in my language city, Yala Gawe. Meaning, don't do that which you don't want to do because you want to please the one next to you. Because the one next to you will not be there when you need to start babysitting a baby. So girls, be selfish about yourself. Self-love starts with you. I can talk. Teachers can talk, the government can talk, your parents can talk, but as long as you have not made that conscious decision to love yourself within yourself holistically, nothing will change. Boys! Boys! Make it fashionable to love yourself. And what do I mean when I say, boys, make it fashionable to love yourself? Stop living according to what will people say syndrome. Because one thing we notice is that most boys conform. Just because he has dreadlocks, I'm also going to twist my hair and have dreadlocks. <laughs> Just because he's smoking one puff, I'm also going to try a puff. Just because he went and he had sex and because I don't want to feel left out when they talk, I'm going to find myself doing the very same thing. Boys, love yourself enough to respect a girl when they say no. Let me give you an, an example. Some of you sitting here, I'm sure some of you sitting here, you've got a girlfriend or a boyfriend in our midst. Okay, well done to you. But, but, I'm saying this because next year, you are going to be out there in the world on your own. Let me tell you something, young boys. 
If a girl says no and you persist, number one, you're with a girl, took her to the movies, you had fun at the movies, and then you decide, oh, let's go to my house. They go with you. Well, it's not your house, your parents' house. <laughs> and the girl decides to follow you there. And you start kissing her because I'm surely all of y'all been kissing. <laughs> now, what I'm saying is, now listen to me, this is serious. And you kiss the girl and you so happen to touch her, her upper body. And then the girl says, no man, stop. That means stop. You don't want to find yourself being arrested for sexual harassment. You don't want to find yourself being arrested for rape. Because let me tell you, the fact that someone said no, or someone said stop, that does not give you a right over their body. I don't care if you say, but, um, Hey, things were standing up, looking left and right. Listen here. Manage your things to calm down. Yes, matriculant. Now, the reason why I speak such things is because I am a founder of a foundation called Kwanele Foundation. And within that foundation, we stand and advocate against gender-based violence holistically. And one of our passions is educating from the classroom, educating from the school. Because we find that sometimes within classroom level, issues of GBV are not thoroughly 100% penetrated. So this is what I give to you today, to say, girl, love yourself enough to walk away from situations that you don't agree with. Boys, the same message. Love yourself enough to walk away from situations you don't agree with. Remember, one life you have. One life you have. Just think about this. How many people in your families have passed on and have never come back to tell you how it is. Uh-huh. I'll give you an example with myself. When my husband passed on, my son, my husband passed on when I was still pregnant with my son. Listen to this. This was 12 years ago. My son is 11 years old today. But my husband has never come back to say hi. So what do I mean? Live each day with a deliberate mentality to love yourself. And loving yourself means choosing right. Choosing right. Making decisions that are right for you. Loving yourself means walking away from situations and people when they say stop it or when they say we don't want to. Loving yourself enough is not imposing yourself on other people. Yes, you are human. You will feel hurt when you're rejected. But listen here, rejection is part of the game. Rejection is part of life's game. Where you need to learn that, okay, I might be rejected now, or this door might have closed for me now, but what does that do? It must amplify within you the desire to keep walking and looking for other opportunities or looking for other doors that may welcome you in. Hence, I say, the people I matriculated with in 2002, some of them, I bump into them into at malls. Some of them, we've reconnected through social media. But guess what? When I matriculated in 2002, I went to Wits University. And not all of the people I matriculated with 
went to Wits University. When I matriculated in 2021, some of the people that were the academic scholars in matric, when I saw them or when I see them now, they are dropouts. They are hobos. They are paras. But the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention it's to say some of you might be sitting here and you're thinking oh my gosh I don't think I'll be able to go into university my grades are not that good but I'm gonna pass listen here as you're sitting here choose right you are the author of how your story ends you are the author of how your story will end. You hold the pen. Some of you might be sitting here thinking, oh my God, I was condoned to grade 12, and if I do pass the trick, it will just be a, oops, thank you, uh uh. It's not over yet. You are the author of your pen. You can still go back home. You can still go back home. Go over your books, read your work for understanding and clarity. You can still contact the school because surely the educators will still be at school. You can still come back and say, ma'am, sir, help me with one, two, three, four, five. And surprise yourself when the results come out. Because some of you might be sitting here and your self-esteem is zero. But guess what? Some people never made it to even get to matric, but you did. Some people decided to drop out during COVID and say, I'm not, I'm just not going there, like, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. But you didn't. You are here. And the fact that you are here as an Adamsonian, as an Adamsonian, I stand here to say, let you be the one that comes and speaks to matriculants in the future to tell them your story. Let it not be you that says, oh my gosh, yes, they were part of our matric group, but you're the prison now. You're... No, 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 no. That is why it is very important. It is very important to have good positive associations. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with saying, dear friend of mine, we've been friends since grade eight. I'm in my trick now. I'm about to write my final. And I actually feel like load shedding you off my crowd because if I keep you, I won't get the marks I want. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Because that is you showing that you are learning the art of putting yourself first. There's nothing wrong with that. But instead, we become like sheep. We want to flock together and flock together and do things together. At the end of the day, we all fail together. So matriculants, my final words to you are, never accept closed doors. If a door shuts in your face, an example, when I left Sir John Adamson High School, I wanted to go study law. And because I applied so late and I wasn't even sure if I was going to pass my trip, that's the truth. I wasn't sure because at that time when I was in the trip, my best friend was pregnant. True story. My best friend was pregnant and at that time, 19 years ago, um, the education system was not yet educated enough about what to do with learners when they're pregnant at school. But thank God they allowed her to come and write. So it affected me. I was so worried. My parents thought, ha, huh, your best friend is pregnant. It means you're doing the same. Imagine. So I had emotional matters and everything. So I wasn't sure if I was going to pass. So I only applied at a later stage to this. And they said to me, LLB campus is full. Ish, can't do LLB. And I said to my dad, I want to do dramatic arts. So my dad, staunch Zulu man, he said, hey, dramatic art, what are you going to do? What job are you going to have? I said, no, but I'm going to add something. He said, no, you're not doing dramatic art. 
And the only opening was in the humanitarian um, office at BITS. And that's how I ended up doing a Bachelor of Education. But guess what? I thought I was going to do it for one year and then jump ship. But I ended up loving it. And I loved it because I could major in what I loved. As I stand before you, I'm an English major one educator. Meaning, I can teach English first language. So, well done to Sir John Adamson and Mr. and Mrs. Worst Dazen who instilled that love for English to me. Number two, I'm a music major. Meaning, I, it's not just choir teaching. I teach music as a subject. Yes? Number three, I also majored in, at that time we called it history. And then I remember when I was teaching, it was called HSS. I don't know what it's called now. History. Wow, well done. <laughs> so, I was also in grade 12 G, by the way. <laughs> and let me tell you, our class was the most Jesus. And, and in our class, because at that time, I don't know if Sir John still does it, at that time they placed us according to our subjects. Because in grade 12 D, grade 12 G, we did we have a group that did history, business economics, geography, and um, something else. I forgot. But we did all those academic study subjects, you know? So they grouped us according to that. And I never did maths. I never did science. Not because there weren't great teachers in the school, but I had the wrong mentality of fearing numbers. I feared numbers. I feared numbers. And life taught me that we as human beings, we fear what we don't know. You know? So it taught me in the years to say, ah, ah, it has to be to you are fearless. You own your truth, you own your narrative, and nothing can stop you. So my tricks, out of my talk, what I want you to know, number one, love yourself. Right? So I'm going to say, love yourself, and you say, I love myself. Matriculants, you need to love yourself. I love myself. Yeah, but some of you are saying, I love myself. No, point at yourself. Matriculants, love yourself. I love myself. Aha, uh -huh. matriculants, love yourself. Matriculants, love yourself. I love myself. Right. Let me break it down. The meaning of love is choose right. What are we going to do? Choose What are we going to do? Choose right. What are we going to do? Choose right. And choosing right means learning to respect the next person's decision and not imposing ourselves on the next person. Right, matriculants? Before I leave, I would like us all to stand up so I can lead you in the school song. <laughs> right, matriculants! Now I need you to remember, grade 12, please look at me. Hello. Grade 12. Grade 12. I was shocked when I realized that the school song is the same school song from 20 years ago. But then again, it means something. Do you know why the school is named Sir John Adamson High School? Yeah. Ah, that's your research. That's your research. You must go find out who it was named after and why. I still know why. But anyways, let's stand up straight for the school song. It's on a hill above the town, the golden rest spread at our feet. The school shall grow in Merido, Lord, this is love for us. Night and
winners of 2021, please give your hands a round of applause.